Well, good morning to you, wherever you are worshiping today at Watoto Church. Jesus is so good. He's so good. He's so good. So wherever you are today, in one of the 13 celebration points, maybe you're here in Kampala, one of the nine celebration points, maybe one of our villages or Watoto villages, or maybe you're up in Gulu, or maybe you're up in Juba. You're a part of us today, and we're so glad that you're worshiping. You know, I'm really excited. Once a year, I get to stand up and talk a little bit about vision, about what God has done, what God is doing, and what God is going to do in the days that lie ahead. And it's so critical for us to constantly focus on vision, because without a vision, we will have no direction. We will have no destiny that we're trying to reach. But if we have vision and we have clarity of vision, we will have clarity of destination. and We will be able to decide how we're going to get there. And great things will happen. And we do have a vision here at Watoto Church. We really do. You know, it was 36 years ago that Marilyn and I brought our three small children to a very broken Uganda. Gunfire every night, a very broken city, infrastructure broken, the roads. It took us 18 months to get a telephone. Uh, the water didn't work. The electricity was very erratic. It was a very difficult place. But God had spoken to my heart while we were pastoring in Zambia. said, I want you to go to Uganda. I want you to plant an English-speaking church downtown Kampala, the capital city of Uganda. And then he said this, clear as anything I've ever heard, through that church, I will touch the city I will touch the nation. And I knew God wanted to do something significant in what he was going to do in Kampala. And here we are 36 years later. And if you look at what God has done, it is absolutely amazing. It is a miraculous work. This is a mighty work of God. And by the grace of God, Watoto Church now is a church that is known all around the world. And we're known all around the world for being a great church, not just because we now have 13 campuses and about 35,000 people approximately that are coming to church on any given Sunday, uh, but because we've seen children's choirs travel around the world. In fact, over 100 children's choirs have traveled and sang to hundreds of thousands of people and told the story of redemption from an African perspective. We've been able to, uh, to see this church grow to the 13 celebration points, and we've been able to see vulnerable women rescued, and it's just an amazing thing. So I want to share this with you just a little bit today. It, it, we, we are standing today where God has brought us, but this is not enough. God wants to do more. God wants to take us to the next level. God wants to take us one step higher, and here I am, at the 67 years of age, in a process of transition from my leadership to the next generation of leadership. And you know what? I think we as a church are ready. Many churches are not ready. When the senior leadership gets to a place or a certain age, they don't know what's going to happen in the future. They're uncertain. People are worried. But we don't have to worry about that. We have a team of incredible young pastors who I have been able to mentor over the last 20 years, and they are some of Africa's great leaders today. And they're going to be some of Africa's great leaders, but not only Africa, I'm, I'm raising them up to be world leaders. I want these men to begin to travel around the world and, and, and tell the story of what God is doing in Africa, building a new Africa. Not only building a new Kampala and a new Uganda, and a, but, a, but a new Africa, a new continent. And that's the vision that God's put, up, put upon my heart. And it's the vision that we carry as a church. You know, when we, we first came, and it was such a broken nation, and if you look at what the rest of the world thought and maybe even thinks about Africa, that it is this great big hole that sucks down aid and just spits back problems, and billions of dollars have come, and how is Africa any different? You know, money is not the solution for solving Africa's problem. It needs to be a new heart. It needs to be a new way of thinking. And the way that we're going to do that is not by concentrating on 
my generation or the past generation, but on the next generation. The generation of young Africans that want to see a new Africa, who, 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 who need to believe that they can be a part of building a new Africa. So that's what I wanna just share with you just a little bit today if I can. I'm really excited about this because it's what God wants to do in our, in our hearts. And, and so just give me a moment here to get my, my phone working, all right? This is a brand new phone, it should be working. There we go. Amazing what God has done. As I said, 13 celebration points, about 30, 35,000 people coming to church. But you know, it's not about just building a big church. It's about getting as many young people into church as we can. I've said this before, I wanna say it again. We are a young people's church. We will be tomorrow, and I hope we will be next year and the year after that, always reaching the next generation of young people because they are the future and the hope of Africa. We've been able to rescue 5,000 vulnerable children. In fact, let me, let, me, let me rather do this. Let me give you the vision that we have. It's very clear on our hearts, and I want them to throw it up on the screen so you can see it. We are an English-speaking, cell-based community church celebrating Christ growing and multiplying as each one reaches one, touching those around us with the love of Jesus, bringing healing to the cities and the nations. This vision is something that captured my heart. And then as I began to see it, and as I began to understand that this is what God wanted us to do, I began to teach it. And it's very clear that we're an English-speaking church. We're not confined to a certain tribal or a certain racial uh, perspective. God is calling us to be an international church, a church that is reaching out to the nations. And now there are churches around the world that are modeling themselves after Watoto Church. Why? Because we've not been confined necessarily to an American or a Canadian culture or even a Ugandan culture or a Buganda culture or a Muteso culture. We are kingdom culture people. And that's what God wants us to be, a, a, a Bible-based group of people who are building a new culture based on, on, the, on the character of Jesus. So, so we are, we are English-speaking, and we become a cell-based church. Today we have about 2,500 small groups, and those small groups are about many things, pastoring people well, but most of all, it's about raising leaders, and every leader has an intern. So we have over 5,000 leaders. That's a focus for us as a church. Why? So that we can take leadership back into our community. Out of that, God began to say, not only are we to be a cell-based church, but we're to take young people in their gap year between high school and between university. Today, sitting in the auditorium here, we have 360, a group of young people who are getting ready for life, and they're going through a discipleship process for six months that are preparing them to be some of the great leaders. And I want to celebrate you because you are some of those great leaders. Out of that... We started the School of Community Leadership, and we've graduated hundreds of people who are doctors and lawyers and teachers and politicians, preparing them to take the culture of Christ into their career, into their sphere of influence, and to ask, how can my career bring about kingdom purposes in this city? So we're committed to leadership. We're committed to be a cell-based church that is all about leadership. But we're also a community church. God began to speak to us about reaching the most vulnerable people in our community. And 20 years ago, that was the orphan children who were left orphaned as a result of HIV AIDS. And we gathered them, one and then 10 and then 20. And we've rescued now 5,000 little boys and girls. And we've given them families. And we've put them in, in, in homes. And they've been able to go to school. And they are the children that have traveled around the world in the children's choirs and have, have sung in the White House and in Buckingham Palace and in many of the great uh, parliaments of the world and in tens of thousands of churches telling the story that is not a sad, bad story of Uganda, but a good story, a, go a story of healing and hope and redemption. And uh, so we've become a, a community church. God began to speak to me so clearly about the fact that the community is owned by God. It's not owned by the government. It's not owned by the people. God owns everything. He made it. And so the community problems are not the government's problems. They're God's problems. And God gives his problems to the church. 
And as a church, we're to recognize that the community, we are a part of the community. We are the community. It's not them and us. And so through ourselves, we're to enter into the community and we're to begin to take the love and the justice and the kindness and the goodness of Jesus to the people right within our community. And it has shaped who we are. We asked ourselves, every one of them, to find a poor HIV positive family and care for them. And we did that. We asked every small group to find a poor or struggling Muslim family and love that family. And we've seen many uh, uh, Muslim people come to the Lord Jesus. So it's not about what one man does behind a pulpit on Sunday that really matters, but it's about what everybody does on Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday. Taking Jesus, taking the culture of the kingdom into the community. And how do we do that? Not by preaching sermons, but by being living sermons demonstrating the character of God in our, uh, in our community. Let me tell you, friends, this is the hope of Kampala. Not Watoto Church, but the kingdom culture is the hope of, uh, uh, of, what, of Kampala and the hope of Uganda and the hope of Africa. So I have a real dream. I have a real dream to see this begin to happen within our hearts. And God has brought us to this, this amazing place. Uh, uh, of, 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 of where we're at today. Just amazing. But what does God want us to do as we begin to look into the future? Because as I said, as this is just the, the start. And there's a whole, whole generation of young pastors ready to take off. We, we want to see 36 celebration points in the next 15 years. That means we're going to need to plant celebration points in the next number of years throughout, throughout the city. And uh, I was really excited uh, to, uh, I'm excited because I get the chance to go to all of our different campuses and I don't preach I listen to the pastors preach and I get excited by, by by their different styles of preaching and their different styles of leadership but as I go I, I see the amazing work that God is doing if you go to Intinda there this past week there were eight was it 8,000 people who came to church at Intinda and and the building only seats 1,400 people 1,400 people, so even, even three services means that you're, you're 4,500 people. They are literally overflowing. What a great problem. What a great problem. It's, a, it's an awesome problem. Pastors around the world would be jealous to have that kind of a problem. And, uh, and then if you go to Bueo Guerrero, I said it right. You'll find that Bueo Guerrero is overflowing. And we have a tent there that's seated about 1,200 people. And just a couple of weeks ago, we tore that tent down and we put up another tent that seats 2,100 people. And you know what? It's overflowing already. So we need to put another celebration point between Bueo Guerrero and Ntinda. And we need to see half of the people or a third of the people go from Ntinda or Bueo Guerrero to that, I said it wrong that time, to. <laughs> To that new, to that Buenos, to that new, that new celebration point, so we can reach people in that community and we can grow. That's what God wants us to do. And as we begin to multiply in other parts of the city, God can help us to see some amazing things happen uh, in, in in this city. So uh, our, we, we've been able to build in some of our celebration points children's facilities. I think we've done that to where? We've done that at, at Luboa, and we've done that at. Buenos, thank you, and uh, in Tinder, that's three. But we need to and and Gulu, yes, we did it in Gulu. And I think it's great that we're building children's facilities even before we're building adults' facilities, because we're a children's focused church. They're the next generation. But you know what? We need to do even more of them. I'm excited that in, at a, at Intinda, that children's facility, and we need to build another one there, is going to be turned into a school every day of the week. Every day of the week, our pastors are going to send their children to that school. And that's going to be the first school that is attached to our celebration points. We want to see that happen in many of our celebration points all over the city and up in Gulu and also up in, uh, in Juba. So what am I talking about? I'm talking about the future and what God wants to do in the future. A very, very exciting future for us. Come on, telephone, work for me if you would. Uh, by the way, I was, I was up... Uh, 
Uh, well, no, before I go there, before I go there, Kansanga is also doing amazing in that rented facility, which is uh, a, a great hall, one of the, the best halls that we have. But it's a challenge for us there. The owner of that building doesn't make life easy for us. We're spending a lot of money there. And it's a bit of a tenuous, uncertain situation. We need to buy property in Kansanga, where we can put up our own facility. And let me tell you, it is expensive to buy property in that area, but we need to be there because the universities are there and the young people are there, and it's a hub for, uh, uh, for a residential area. And so it's, we've looked at a number of properties and we're still working on that. Very important for us to do, to do that. Um, we also, I was, I was all so excited this past weekend to go up to, to Juba. And I love going to Juba because the, we, we, we see young South Sudanese. And how do you know they're South Sudanese? They always look down on you. <laughs> and they are as black as night. <laughs> and you ask them to smile so you can see them. <laughs> they, and, but they're wonderful people. And there's this generation of, there's this generation of young South Sudanese who are part of building a new nation, the newest nation on earth. And, and they're, they're coming to church. They're coming to church, Watoto Church in, in, in Juba. I was so excited up there. We, we, we just moved last week. We were renting a building only on Sundays. And we've been doing that. We've been in Juba for eight years. It's time to have our own facility. So we rented another facility, and it's, it's not a super facility, not a, a great facility, but we did a, a, a tremendous work. G Gibson, uh, our projects manager, went up there, and he oversaw the, the renovations of this building. And the building that we were in sat 300 people. The building that we are now going into seats 600 people. And, and so I'm really excited about that. And we wondered uh, what the service would be like there. And uh, when we went up, you know what? Both services, 1,200 seats, were jam-packed full in Juba. So wherever, wherever you and I have the opportunity to multiply, to grow and to multiply and make space, we're making space for the next generation of young African leaders to go to a church where they feel, this is my home, this is where I belong, this is where I'm empowered, this is where I can be a part of the future. And so I'm really, 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 really excited about that. What am I saying? I'm saying to you, we have come a long way, where are we going? We need to, we need to ask ourselves, we've asked ourselves an, a number of things as we've looked at the vulnerable people that we're reaching in our community. And we really are beginning to focus in on the most vulnerable, poor, generally HIV positive, generally abandoned woman who is raising two, three, four, five of her own children. And, and there, are, there are literally, you know, hundreds of thousands of them in Kampala. And there are millions of them in Uganda. And there are tens of millions of them all over Africa. And they feel like they are worth nothing and they're struggling their children don't go to school they're living in slums uh, they, they don't have a job it's difficult for them to even feed their children and you know what they live in our neighborhoods and god has put them upon our heart and so through through Marilyn and through Vernita and through our ladies ministry, we've begun to reach these women. I think we've reached over 4,000 women. They have about 15,000 children. That's our new focus as a church. Where are we going in the future? We're multiplying celebration points. We're building schools so that not only can we go to church, but they can go to church. Their children can go to church. They can find new life, new hope. I'm so excited. I don't have the time to tell you all the stories, but uh, uh, last uh, couple of weeks ago, Ver Vernita, she, she's very focused on this, and she, she, she wants to get us into that community and to begin to really care for these women right where they are. And, and so she's been very patient with Marilyn and I, and she took us to one of the cells where these women are, which is the cell right in our community, only 200 yards from where I live. And there were two ladies that were brought to the church, Resty and... Justine and they they were a part of Watoto neighborhood and so they came to the church and there they were embraced and there they were empowered and there they found engagement with Watoto church and they both tell their story of, of tragedy abandoned 
and one of them, the husband, died struggling to raise their children, but they came to Watoto Church, and their lives were transformed. Not only did they receive Jesus, but they received dignity and value. Not only that, they received training so that they would be able to do something to earn money, because we're not here to give people money. We're here to help people learn how to make money themselves and to look after themselves. So these two ladies went back to where we live, right just down the street, and over a period of a year, year and a half, two years, they gathered 60 other women who were like them, and they embraced them. We didn't, they did. And they taught them, and they embraced them, and they empowered them. And they went from two sewing machines, because when they graduate, we give them something to help them get started. They went from two sewing machines, and the cell that's a part of our community bought them, I think, five more. Now, and they said, well, we have to start a little factory. So they put up just a simple little house made out of bricks that they made themselves from the swamp just down the road. And they put on a tin roof. And if you go there now, here are their sewing machines all laid out, and the ladies go in shifts. And they make things. And then they go out in the community, and they sell things. And their children are going to school. That's the work of God. That's the work of Watoto Church. And my dream, my dream, my dream is that this is not a program of Watoto Church. This is a lifestyle of the people who go to Watoto Church. That every cell is involved in this process. That cell leaders and members in the cells recognize that we need to do this right within our community where we are. Uh, one of the ladies that was there, she, she, you know, she's a, a typical looking lady who's been through some real tough times. Teeth are missing. And, 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 you know, you just wonder. We heard her story. She was a drunk. She used to sleep often in the gutters. She was very abusive to everybody who went by. Nobody wanted to talk to her. But Resty and Justine and the other ladies embraced her. And she experienced love for the first time. They took her to Kansanga Church. The first time she was there, she gave her life to Jesus. She never, she, she never took another drink. Her life was changed. And they helped her make herself a, look, a little bit better. And one of the men in the community uh, saw her. And they married them at Kansanga Church. Her life has been radically transformed. Her, her life has been radically transformed. You know, this is the work of God. Her children, two, three, four, five, whatever, they are the future members of Watoto Church with a new thinking, a new culture. So this is, this is what we, our, future, our future involves. And I know that I've said this before, but that's what vision is all about, what these women say they need, and we believe it's true. They all say the same thing. We need a school for our children. We need a steady income, a job. We need better housing. We can't live like this. And we need medical care. And so as a church, Watoto neighborhood is about this church, our church, us, we. Not a program, but us. Reaching into our communities, finding the vulnerable women who are struggling, embracing them, giving them back their lives, and then helping them. So we want to build schools wherever we have campuses. We want to start businesses to create jobs. And I wanna challenge the businessmen of this church. You're listening to me right now. You have a gift for business. I'm not a businessman, I could have been, but I'm not, I'm a pastor. And that's my focus. Why don't you get together and say, how can we help our pastor? How can we help this, this church that we're a part of? Begin to create businesses, to create jobs all throughout the city. We're gonna train those women. They're gonna be the best employees. Hmm? And then we also are looking, beginning low-income housing. Uh, I talked to you about uh, Gibson, who, and he's our projects manager kind of guy. And, and he's the one that's helping me put together a low-income housing project uh, plan where we will have simple houses that we build where these women can go in, and they can pay a very simple nominal rent and pay it for themselves out of the job that they have. Their children can live there. It's near one of our campuses, near one of our schools. We can change their lives. And so we want to we want to see friends from all around the world who used to build Watoto homes on our children's villages come alongside us and build these homes and pay for these homes. And around the world, there's a vision of transforming people's lives so that we can transform 
a nation's life, a city's life. That's what this is all about. And I'm really, really, really excited about, uh, uh, about that. And I want to encourage you to, to, to be a part of this. So now I want to close. I want to, I want to, I want to bring this to, to a close. And just two things that I want to say. And all of this is from my heart to you. It's such an honor for Marilyn and I to have spent, you know, 36 years here. And I know I have a Canadian passport, and I know I have a British passport because my dad was Canadian and my mom was British, but I'm, I'm a Ugandan on the inside. I really am. And, and if, if I didn't have to give up one of my passports, it would be a Ugandan passport. But come on, if you had an American, a Canadian, and a British, you wouldn't give it. You, you'd hang on to that, too. But Marilyn only has one. She has a Canadian passport, so the government said, we, we want to give you a, a Ugandan passport. And she's a Ugandan citizen, so now I'm married to a Ugandan. <laughs> and um, we're, the, the few, we're, uh, we're, our future is here. We want to be here as mom and dad for as long as you will allow us to be mom and dad in the community. And we want to see our sons rise up and take the responsibility. They already have. They already are. Our future is secure because we have great young people that are here. And what is this about? This is about transformation. It's about building a new culture. It's about building a new culture that is not based upon you know, Buganda culture or Matueso culture or Canadian culture or African culture, although there's many good things about that and we don't want to throw those away, but we need kingdom culture. We need love. We need justice. We need truth. We need kindness. We need to be a generous nation. We need to, we need to destroy the corruption and the greed and the, and the lack of consideration that we have. We ought to be able to park our cars when we go to the shop and leave our, our, our computer sitting on the front seat and not worry about it. God wants us to build that kind of nation again. And we can. If the next generation will say, the past is the past, the future is ours. Let's build that kind of nation. We can do that. I really believe we can do that. So it's about building a new Africa. But I want to close with just three thoughts in the next three minutes that I have before, before I'm finished. How can we do this? How can we do this? Three things. Number one, give yourself wholeheartedly to Jesus. To Jesus. Jesus is the answer, who he is, what he's like. And it's about multiplying and replicating the life of Jesus, the character of Jesus. You will never find a better friend than Jesus. He will never abandon you. He'll never leave you. And there may be times when you're struggling and it seems like nobody else cares. Jesus really cares. And if you've never given your life to Jesus, do it today. And if you've given your life to Jesus and maybe you find it's difficult and you, you drift back a little bit, go back and put your arms around him and say, sorry, Jesus, I, I want to know you better. I want to love you more. If you do that, Jesus is going to stand beside you and he's going to make you successful in all that you do. The second thing I want to say is give yourself wholeheartedly to kingdom work. Uh, uh, this year, our theme is the kingdom of God first. What does the Bible say? Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these other things, food and clothes and everything else that we need, careers, will be added to you. It begins with giving ourselves wholeheartedly to kingdom work. Can I just say this? Kingdom work is not just what we do in church. It's about life. One of the things that I've said all my life is all of life is a sacred act of worship. Whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. Do you know that your family is kingdom work? So be the best husband. Be the best wife. Say, I'm not married yet. Well, get ready to be the best husband. Get ready to be the best wife. Keep yourself pure uh, so that you can be that, that, that marital partner that God wants you to be. If, you, if you're a dad, love your children. Love your wife. Be faithful to her. Treat your children with dignity and respect. See them as the future. That's kingdom work. But the other kingdom work is the church. You know what? The church is our family. Church is not an event you go to. Church is a family that you belong to. And we may be in 13 different places, but we are a family. And hey, I'm dad. And, and Marilyn's mom. And here's all our brothers, sons and daughters, and they're your brothers and sisters. We're a part of this together. And so give yourself to the church. How do you give yourself to the church? Don't only be faithful on Sundays, and that's good, or Saturdays and Sundays to celebration, but the other thing that's absolutely critical, 
get a part, become a part of a local cell, a small group in your community. About 50% of the people who come to Watata Church are in cells. 50% of you, I'm not very happy with you. Well, I am. I'm glad you're coming. But I'd like to see you in a cell because you have something to contribute in that small group. And it's through that small group that not only will you be blessed, you know, if you get into trouble, your cell members are going to help you. And if somebody else gets into trouble, you can help them. And when you help somebody else, you help yourself. And, and life becomes so much more meaningful. It's doing life together. And it's through the small groups that we're going to be able to do these things that we've talked about, reaching the vulnerable in our community. You may be a rich person driving a nice car with a big job, get in a cell. There are poor people around you who need your attention. And it's not about giving money. It's about giving yourself to them. So become a part of a cell. And the last thing that I want to say, and, and this is very important, would you return faithfully the Lord's tithe? Every time you get an increase, bring one-tenth of your increase. And, and this is so important. I've just shared with you where we need to go in the future, building buildings all over where we have properties already. Some of us have been in tents for eight years. We need to build buildings. We need more children's facilities. Kansanga, we need to buy a property there. And not just Kansanga, we have to get some for the other celebration points that we need to multiply around. Can I tell you one exciting piece of news? This year, we want to start Watoto Church Mbarara. Mm. It's time, it's time. And, and we have blessing now. We have blessing from the churches that we work with or the Pentecostal Assemblies of God to begin to plant in some of the other larger communities. Uh, we'd like to go to Jinja at the same time, but that'll cost too much money. Maybe next year. We're never, never, never going to be able to do it as easily as we can if, if we do not return the Lord's tithe. I, I want to just say this. This is so important. The first tenth of everything that comes into your hands does not belong to you. It belongs to God. And he puts it in your hand as a test. He says, return the Lord's tithe. And when you do, see how I will open the windows of heaven and pour out blessing upon you. And I know that there are many of us in this church who are faithful with the Lord's tithe every single increase you get. Marilyn and I have been doing it all of our lives, and we're living blessed lives. We really are. And many of us in this church, many of you are doing that. I want to say thank you for being faithful to the Lord's tithe. And you're giving to the Lord. You're giving to His work. You're giving to build the kingdom of God. You see my lifestyle. You see the lifestyle of our pastors. It's not about us and how much money we have. All of that is decided by other people who are elders and deacons in this church. We're faithful. Every single shilling we give is accounted for. Every single shilling. We're very careful about that. We're not, we're not going to drive a fleet of the fanciest cars. We're never going to do that. I know I look good, but that's just who I am. It's true. But you, you can find clothes like this down the street quite cheap and look just as good as that. I, I, I have enough. I have enough. And you're blessing me as a church. Every one of us. I mean every one of us. Here's, here's what will happen. If every one of us who come to this church and believe in this church and love this church and take the time to sit in a pew that someone has paid for and sit and have the lights that cost money because electricity costs money. If you want to go to the toilet, we've tried to make them as nice as possible, and when you flush it, it costs money. There's money for all of them. Our pastors deserve to be cared for. We have lots of people in, in so many departments that are, are working here, good employees. They need to be paid. But bigger than that, we need to buy property. We do. We need to build buildings. We need to multiply. We need to grow. And it, it's going to take us, hear me, it's going to take us tens of millions of dollars. If we had $10 million right now, we'd spend it right now on kingdom work to launch us forward. You have the money. It's sitting in your pocket, it's sitting in your bank account. And I, we, I know we give a, a special offering once a year, uh, and we try to give that money away so that we can use it to, to extend the kingdom around the world. But what I'm asking you as your pastor is, don't let one opportunity go by where you don't return the Lord's tithe. And if we all do this, I believe we're eventually, we would have so much money 
we'd have to start giving it away. And that's what God wants us to do. So give yourself wholeheartedly to Jesus. Give yourself wholeheartedly to kingdom work and be faithful. Return the Lord's tithe. Now I want to welcome your pastor who looks after you every single week to come and close this service. God bless you. I love you.